with most of the lyrics on this album, I feel that I've, um, I'm treading new ground for me, you know? I'm writing about things that I've felt for a long time but never really written about. They've been waiting for word to come down. They've been waiting for you night and day. That's just the way it is, is, um, the lyrics to this one came pretty much at the same time as the music. That's to say, it was improvised and sort of I kept most of the words that I sang. They won't wait any longer for you. It may already be too late. It's about Northern Ireland, specifically. Um, there are... The fact that people are growing up over there, um, the kids are growing up, and you see newsreels of them throwing petrol bombs and stuff, and they don't really know why they're doing it. They're just doing it because their brothers did it, and their fathers did it, and their grandfathers did it, but they're not quite sure why they're doing it. And I don't know why, why don't you hold it on? I don't know why, but tell me what's on me, oh, so strong. Oh, why, is there something I don't know? Something very wrong. fighting people they don't even know what for a lot of them and uh, it's just all the you know all the, the terrorism that's about it's just people being killed constantly it's nothing is worth that really that's so the song is suggesting that maybe we could all we should all sit down and talk about it and um, it's a simplistic way of looking at it but then that's really the way I write the songs you know like sort of from a man on the street's point of view I mean you don't need to know all the details or you need to know the facts there are people getting killed for nothing so let's work it out. You said you didn't need me in your life. Oh, I guess you were right. Yeah. You weren't ever meant to cause you no thing. But it looks like it did it again. Wish it would rain down. Well, that was, again, the lyrics for that were kind of improvised when the music was written. And it's, there are a lot of, I'm sure that a psychologist would, would look at these lyrics and say there's a lot more going on than what I'm saying in terms of my own life. a song about, um, uh, it's related to sort of maybe your first girlfriend or your first boyfriend or whatever, when you, after all those years, you sort of see them on the street and suddenly it open, opens all those feelings again, opens the cut, if you like. guy who just sort of feels that he would he could actually go around and see this person without realizing that it would open up all those old wounds so there's that on that level the song is the lyric is works but also I'm sure like I say the psychologist would look underneath that and it would probably relate to my past relationships and things something happened on the way to heaven is uh, it was the last song I wrote, um, and originally I wrote it for the Four Tops, but then I turned up, I liked it, so I didn't give it to them. <laughs> when it came to the lyrics, it was the last song to be written lyrically, and Danny DeVito wanted a song for a film of his which is about to come out, called um, War of the Roses. But anyway, he didn't like the song, so um, I'd already written the words, so I, I, kept, I kept the song. So that's really where, um, that's why the lyrics are about what they are. Well, I'm a father on the phone to my son, really. Uh, I've got a 17-year-old daughter and 13-year-old son that live in Canada, and Again, you know, sort of guilt-wise, I feel um, 
you know, I haven't lived with them for like since since he was like two. Become a father on the phone once a week and also during the summer when they come over for five or six weeks. And as he gets older, he's finding more problems that he needs to talk to a man about, his dad about. So, um, and I was getting this on the phone when I was speaking to him. So, I kind of thought I'd write a song that he could listen to with advice. I mean, when you're a kid and your father, you think, what, who's going to do the insurance on the house? You know, what happens? How do you insure a car? You know, what, what do you do? How do you buy a house? You know, these things you grow up with, knowing that your mum and dad do it for you. And of course, by the time you get to a certain age and they're no longer there, you've found out how to do it anyway. But it's really a song for him to put on and uh, relationships, you know, because um, he was asking me all these things about girls. So I've just got to put it down in song. Uh, we did use um, guest players. Clapton, who lives down the road from here, a good friend of mine for many years. Um, he played on face value, but he played very, very quietly on If Leaving Me Is Easy, and everyone said they couldn't hear him. So, um, and he complained that I never asked him to play on any other album, so I asked him to play on this one. And he plays great. He plays on Wish It Would Rain. Now I, ooh, now I wish it would rain down, down on me. Ooh, yes, I wish it would rain, rain down on me. Dave Crosby, who I tried to get for face value, but he was out on his boat a lot of the time at that point. He was probably out of it on his boat, is what he was. Uh, he said I wouldn't have liked him then, because he wasn't a very nice person then. But it was, I met him at the Atlantic Records 40th anniversary party, and, or the gig, and then the party afterwards. <laughs> him to sing on the album and he really wanted to do it so we stayed in touch and he came down and sang on when we were in Los Angeles he sang on Another Day in Paradise and that's just the way it is. It's been your life for as long as you can remember but you cannot fight no more. What I wanted him to do was come in like he does with Crosby, Stills and Nash and just pick out all these strange harmonies because he he picks out all different lines and strange harmonies that people wouldn't otherwise think of. So, um, and I gave him the tapes of the songs and he came back and he, into the studio and he did exactly that. So that was a very successful uh, partnership with those two songs. He was great. Very, very alert, very funny. Not at all a casualty, which is one people could be forgiven for thinking he might be after all he's been through. I don't know why garde ainsi un très bon souvenir de l'apparition très brève de Steve Winwood lors de la production de Bad Seriously. Lors de l'enregistrement de l'album, Winwood arrive avec un instrument depuis longtemps oublié. He played Hammond organ and uh, he was great. I mean, it's, you forget how good an, an organ, I hear how good an organist he is and also how good a Hammond organ can sound in these days of synthesizers. It's a real old instrument that when it's played well, it sounds great. Phil Collins adopte depuis longtemps un principe simple, inviter les meilleurs musiciens. Les trompettistes et trombonistes, par exemple, sont empruntés au groupe Earth, Wind and Fire. Une exigence de qualité qui se répercute dans les critiques et les journaux comme le Record Mirror, qui juge les albums de Phil Collins dignes d'être joués jusqu'à usure complète de la platine. My albums and my music is very personal to me and, and I, the way it turns out on the record is really how I want it to sound. So when you get in, musicians to come in and do what you do, like Chester comes in and plays the drums that I play, Brad comes in and plays the keyboards that I play, you know, and um, I don't play guitar, which is fortunate for Daryl, because he comes in and plays what he played. But um, in the early days of my tours, like I say, the first two tours, I would go out there and after the show I'd come back to my room and I would 
listen to the tape, make notes. And sometimes that night, knock on people's doors and say, listen, this wasn't right. Don't play this, play this. You know, or can you not stretch it so far? Can you just play what I played, you know? And uh, of course, you're, you know, you've got fantastically talented musicians and you're only half using them. If that, because I'm a very limited keyboard player and you've got a great keyboard player like Brad. Well, it's just like, it's just like, can you give me a different preset now? So now I, I actually allow for music to stretch a bit and for them to plant their own personalities on it. As long as ultimately it feels the same or, is, or it feels good, you know, songs have to develop a bit. As soon as you've got 12 people playing something that one person or two people have done, it's obviously going to change. He's got a good mind. I really, I really admire his, his talents. Um, most of all, his drumming. He's a staggering drummer. I wish there was more opportunity to work together as a bass player drummer because that's always kind of the that's the combination that I relate to, and I relate to him now more as a singer songwriter. And uh, but his his drumming is is really astounding. Intense worker. I'm very seldom do you get a break in between when you when you go to eat. They put up another tape already. And you go eat, you come back, and you work. But I have nothing against that kind of working. Um, I would say that personality-wise, he's very easy to get along with, and work-wise, he works very hard, and he makes you work very hard with him. When I was there and I saw what you did, so with my own two eyes, so you can wipe out that. First of all, seen him change as a writer. I, I didn't even realize he was a writer when I joined Genesis in '78. But when he, when he played the demo for "In the Air Tonight," I was amazed at what a great song this was immediately. But as a leader, I've seen him get a little more um, confidence. In the beginning, he was kind of afraid to tell you what to do or tell certain guys in the band what to do. I think that's, that's just part of growing up as a leader, of maturity. I've seen a lot of that with him. Up at the back there, we've got someone that's new first this time. Would you welcome, please, put your hands together now for all the way from Philadelphia, PA. That's Pennsylvania, US of A. That's United States of America. But no time to his hands leave his arms. Mr. Brad Cole! gentleman and a workaholic is really thoroughly dedicated to what he does and I think that's one reason for his success and his reputation the respect that he gets from everybody is that he is so firmly dedicated to what he does and not so much to just being a star for example he's, he's a musician first and foremost and I really respect him for that